Good morning everyone, you guys have just started your journey in PSO2 New Genesis and you guys may be a little bit confused on Oh, why don't I have my dailies unlocked automatically? Why can't I change my keyboard bindings? Why can't I do all these things? Well, the reason is simply because you need to play through the story, you need to play through the tutorial. So for example, at the very beginning, you're not even going to have access to your gear, sub palette, to your personal stuff, or even systems which will allow you to change your control key bindings. You will not have access to any of those things until you complete the tutorial. So the tutorial town is Alio Town over here here you're gonna need to complete all of the tutorial stuff even if you are a PSO2 veteran they force you to play through the entire tutorial before you unlock all your regular functions so I highly recommend that should be your number one priority once you've made your character or once you've loaded your character in is do the tutorial and blast through it. Now, if you're new to the channel, I upload PSO2 New Genesis content daily. So if you do play this game, I'd really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So when you first arrive to Central City, you're going to notice that you can't see any of the other players. You're literally going to be in Central City by yourself. And the reason for that is because there's still more tutorial stuff that they require you to do. So just blast through that and focus on the main mission, all right? It's very important that you focus on the main quest because you will unlock very important features such as your daily quests and your weekly quests. You get a lot of money for completing your weeklies, so it should be your number one priority to unlock the dailies and weeklies. And in order to do that, you simply need to blast through the main storyline, get to the point where I am, the trio goes to battle. The quest before this requires you to hit 950 battle power. So a lot of people are asking me, Caro, how do I get gear? How do I level up? Where should I be grinding to get the 950 battle power after I've completed the main quest and all the side quests and I'm stuck there? Well, the first thing that I recommend is actually talking to the class trainers. So when you teleport to Central City, you're going to spawn right here at this Ryuka device. Right next to the Ryuka device, right here, there are actually three trainers. It's very important to do their quest because they give you tier 2 weapons. So when I press I over here you can see that this sword is a 1 star rarity weapon. However, by completing their mission, they will give you a two-star rarity weapon as well as a bunch of other goodies. So you can see here that I even got a three-star rarity weapon, which is pretty nice. Now, this is mainly for new players. Now, if you are an old existing player and maybe you have some weapons in your storage or your inventory, you can check this. So keep in mind that New Genesis is different now. You press I to open up your inventory, but you can go straight to your storage. You can go to all storage right here and you can pick out whatever weapons you want from the storage when you're in the open field. So let's say that we go to equipable right now and you can see that I have a union lance over here. So if I want to use my union weapon, I can use that. And you can see that all of these weapons over here are going to be usable and can be equipped. Basically, if you are a returning player or an old PSO2 player coming into New Genesis, you can take out your existing weapons over here. And as long as the weapon does not have the little X sign over here, you can equip the weapon. So let me just show you something that I found very interesting, and that is Blossom of the New Moon plus 35. Uh, I was able to equip this and immediately just start wrecking things with this uh, katana. Even though it, okay, technically it's not a katana, it looks like a katana, and it acts like a katana, but it's technically a sword. So um, this is just my way of being a wannabe Braver, even though Braver's not out yet. So I can cast all of my Hunter PA, so if I press F4 over here, you can see these are all my Hunter PAs, but I am simply using an old weapon, which is Blossom of the New Moon. However, let's say you are brand new to New Genesis, so you don't have all these old weapons that you can like use to power level yourself, right? Don't worry, where you want to farm in order to get good gear is going to be at Mount Magnus right here, alright? But make sure by the time you start farming Mount Magnus, make sure that you've unlocked your weeklies. Now the reason I say that is because when we go to task and quest, and we go to task, and we go to weeklies, and over here we change it to complete, you're going to notice that one of the weeklies is called PSE Burst Observation. And in order to complete this quest, which gives you a hundred thousand new Meseta, you need to get three PSE Bursts. And the easiest place to get PSE Bursts is Mount Magnus, I think it might be the only place to get PSE Bursts, but basically you need to go there and just get three PSE Bursts. Now the reason why you want to unlock this relatively early 
is because Mount Magnus is a great place to farm until level 10. Once you hit level 10, the mobs at Mount Magnus will not give you a lot of EXP. The EXP will drop off a cliff. And the reason for this is because the mobs in Mount Magnus are level 5. So by the time you're level 10 and you start killing the mobs there, you will gain very, very little EXP. So it's not recommended to farm there anymore unless you change your class. So for example, you can see right now my main class is Force and my subclass as hunter now if i want to continue to farm at mount magnus maybe because i need better gear because i need three star rarity weapons so forth and so on i can change my main class so what i would be doing would be i would put the hunter as the main class since it's level six so that i gain regular amounts of exp so that it will level my hunter until level 10 then the exp gain will drop off a cliff again so Mount Magnus is a great place to farm until level 10 and the main thing that you're looking for are three star rarity weapons because you're going to activate those PSE bursts, there's going to be a lot of mob spawning, there's going to be a lot of bosses and you're just going to constantly be killing them, alright? And the main thing you're going to be farming at Mount Magnus is going to be for gear as well as the levels obviously, but gear should be the main focus there and you're going to definitely get a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot of two star rarity weapons. However, what you're aiming for are the three star rarity weapons and this is your goal. Now once you get the three star rarity weapon of your choice, the next thing is make sure to enhance it. Enhancing it will increase its damage and increasing its potential will also help a lot. So in order to do that, we're going to have to come over here to the uh, enhancer or the affixer. So we're going to come right here and you can see right here at the item lab. Once you talk to the NPC at the item lab, you're going to notice there are still some things that are locked. And these are locked because you have not completed the story yet. So basically, you really want to blast through the story in order to unlock these features, especially the unlock potential is very, very powerful. This thing right here can literally just give you like 20% DPS increase just like that. It's super, super important, super easy. However, what we want to do first is we want to do item enhancement. So by enhancing the item over here, you will increase your damage. So you can see over here when I feed it all these different weapons, you can see it goes from level 0 to level 3. And then you can feed up to 5 separate weapons, right? So you can see that I will be getting my weapon from level 0 to level 6 on enhancement. Now this will cost N grinders as well as Meseta. It's very important that you understand this. And once you're sure about that, you can click confirm and it'll tell you right here how much damage you're going to be increasing. The rule of thumb is basically every level you enhance will give you one additional attack power. And you can enhance weapons 40 times. So you can get the weapon to plus 40, which will give you plus 40 attack. However, old weapons taken from base PSO2 cannot be enhanced, cannot be augmented, cannot be affixed. You can't do anything with these weapons because they are taken from base PSO2. So the only time where you can enhance, affix, blah 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 are going to be the new weapons that drop from new Genesis. So it is in your best interest to get the new Genesis equipment and items so forth and so on because in the long run, these will outshine all of our base PSO2 weapons and gear. However, if you do have the weapons and if you do have the units, you can definitely use this to boost yourself and give yourself like a power spike because it does help quite a bit, especially in the very early stages. However, don't expect to use it for more than a week or two because once you play the game, you're going to be getting a lot better gear, a lot better drops. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is inventory management. So let's say you're outside in the field, you're fighting and you're like, oh my goodness, I have 65 out of 100 in my inventory. Keep in mind that in your inventory, you can only hold up to 100 items by default. However, a lot of people don't know that you can sell items while in the open field. So in order to select multiple items, you hold down shift, you click the item and you click whatever item that you want to highlight till, and then you left click and right here, convert to cash. You can sell all the items even when you are in the open field. So you can just do that and it will automatically sell all the items for new Meseta and it will clear up inventory space super easily. So what you can do is you can get rid of a lot of these one star rarity weapons if you don't need it. However, do keep in mind that one star rarity weapons, two star rarity weapons, so forth, are really good for enhancing other weapons. So for example, if you want to enhance your three star rarity sword, you need to feed two star rarities or one star rarities or you need to feed other weapons into it in order to enhance it. So even though it might be a good idea to sell a lot of these weapons to make space, I would save a couple, maybe like the two star rarity weapons I would save in order to use those to enhance my three star rarity weapons or even my four star rarity weapons, all right? 
Now the last tip that I have for you guys are going to be about these red chests as well as these gold chests. It's very important to hunt down the red chests over here because they can give star gems. However, red chests do not respawn. If you played the tutorial and you read all the fine text, they tell you there are three different types of boxes. There's the green boxes, there's the red boxes, and the gold boxes. So the red boxes and the gold boxes do not respawn and they are account bound. So once you break it on one character, that's it. There's no more. However, they do give some nice goodies. So if we break this one right here, you're going to notice that I just got a bunch of Masetta. I got 10,000 Masetta from that one. However, there are certain boxes that actually give you star gems. So let's break this gold one over here. And you can see there is terrible lag, which really sucks. So we're just waiting for that to break. And boom, we got a bunch. We got photon quartz, which is pretty nice as well. So these green ones will always respawn, all right? These green boxes will respawn. I don't know how often they respawn, but they do respawn. But the red and gold ones, unfortunately, do not respawn. Now, another commonly asked question is, Carol, when do I unlock my subclass? And so in order to unlock your subclass, all you need to do is blast through the main story. Basically, everything is revolved around the main storyline, all right? So if you want to unlock anything or if you don't know how to unlock anything, the chances are pretty high that it's just do the storyline, okay? And make sure once you have unlocked the subclass to pick a subclass, you can do so by going over here to change class, and there's going to be a main class as well as a subclass. So make sure that you do pick one so that it can start gaining EXP and start leveling up because this will also help your battle power. Now while you're doing that, it is also very important to learn class skills. You gain class skills by doing the cocoons. There are a bunch of cocoons out in the open world. They look like this, and you basically need to do them. So make sure to go out of your way to complete these. Some of these may require you to be a certain level, and um, basically you want to find all of these cocoons, make sure to mark them out and do them, because once you've marked them, you can just teleport to it and complete it. So you don't need to run all the way there anymore. All right, so it's very important. If you see a cocoon, make sure to run up to it to unlock the little teleport, the little waypoint so that you can get there. And once you have unlocked those skill points, make sure to actually use the skill points. So you can see here, I have unlocked three skill points, which means I can use three skill points on every different class that I want. So skills will definitely help you boost your battle power. All right, now one more tip before I end the video, and that is the wall jumping. So by default, if you run up to a wall and just press spacebar, you're automatically going to wall jump. However, you can turn that off in the options. So when we go to systems and go to options over here, you can turn off auto wall kick. You can turn it from automatic, which is turned on by default, to manual. I personally prefer manual. So in order to wall kick in manual mode, you run up to a wall, you jump, and then you press spacebar, and then you will wall kick. So that way you can control your wall kicks with a double jump and then a wall kick whenever you want, instead of automatically randomly wall kicking just because you're close to a wall. It's helped me quite a bit because it gives me more control when I'm traversing over high terrain, stuff like that. So that is something that you guys could do if you don't like the auto wall jump. However, if it's doing great for you, then by all means, you know, keep it on. And last but not least, please have fun in New Genesis. I know there are a lot of issues right now, mainly with lag because the servers are getting smashed right now. If you're not having fun because the game is just way too laggy and there's just so much crap going on and you just, you're not enjoying it, then, you know, just take a break, go play Genshin Impact, go play something else and come back a couple days later after they've solved all the server issues. Because this game is really, really fun. It just really sucks that the release is like this, you know, with all those delays as well as the, all these lag issues, so forth and so on. But I'm pretty sure that Sega wasn't expecting this many people to smash their game. Like on release just through Steam, there was like 60,000 people online. It was kind of nuts. And so, um, you know, I'm just guessing that they weren't expecting or they weren't ready for the servers to get hit this hard. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye! What can I say except you're welcome For the heals, the boosts, the rest